Good evening, everybody, and welcome to India Mart's Quarter 3 FY24 Earnings Webinar. First of all, a very, very happy new year to all of you. As we have declared our results uh, just a couple of hours ago, but we have circulated our earnings presentation, which is available on our website as well as on the stock exchange website. I'm sure you would have gone through the presentation and I would be happy to take any questions afterwards. We are pleased to report that India Mart consolidated collection from customers has grown by 17% to rupees 332 crores in this quarter as compared to rupees 283 crores last year. And deferred revenue has grown by 25% to rupees 1270 crores on consolidated basis. Consolidated revenue from operations has grown by 21% to rupees 305 crores. Our total traffic has grown uh, to 272 million for the quarter. Unique business inquiries grew to 23 million, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 9% and 4% respectively. Total paying subscription suppliers have grown to 212,000 as communicated in the previous quarter. We continue to see more than anticipated churn on the increased customer base in the silver monthly and silver annual bucket, leading to a net addition of close to only 2,000 paying subscription in this quarter again. Once the improvement in the churn happens, we will come back with the guidance of the net customer addition going forward. We will continue to make investment in strengthening our organization and undertake the measures to enhance customer experience, reduce churn, as well as drive deeper penetration by paying customers in focus cities. Now I will hand over the call to Brijesh uh, to update you about Busy Infotech. Thank you and over to you, Brijesh. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Busy has done a net billing of 14.4 crore uh, in Q3, which represents a YOY growth of 21%. The revenue from operations has grown by 26% uh, to 12.6 crores, uh, and the deferred revenues have grown by 47% to about 39.9 crores. The EBITDA for this quarter uh, is at 1.1 crores. Uh, that's a margin of about 9%, whereas the uh, net profit for the quarter stands at 2.3 crores. Uh, we, uh, Busy has generated positive cash flows uh, from operations of 4.3 crores uh, during this quarter. Uh, we've sold about 6,000 new licenses, which make the closing count uh, of uh, licenses sold at 3,54,000 at the end of December 2023. The overall performance uh, is pretty much in line with our expectations, uh, and we are focused on increasing the growth rate in this uh, year also. Uh, so uh, with this, I will hand over the call to Pratik, who will talk about the financial performance. Thank you, Rajesh. Good evening, everyone. I will take you through the financial performance for the quarter ending December 2023. Consolidated collection from customers and revenue from operations grew by 17% and 21% respectively to rupees 332 crores and rupees 305 crores. Deferred revenue for the quarter stood at 1270 crores, an increase of 25% year-on-year basis. India Mart standalone collection from customers for the quarter were at rupees 316 crores and revenue from operations stood at rupees 291 crores, registering year-on-year -year growth of 16% and 21% respectively. Our growth in revenue was primarily driven by a 9% increase in the paying subscription suppliers and approximately 11% improvement in ARPU due to higher monetization. Deferred revenue was at 1,229 crores, representing a year-on-year -year growth of 24%. EBITDA of India Mart standalone business stood at Rs. 87 crore, representing a margin of 30%. Consolidated EBITDA was at Rs. 86 crores, representing margin of 28%. Consolidated net profit for the quarter was at rupees 82 crores. Consolidated cash generated from operations was rupees 106 crores. Consolidated cash and treasury balance stood at rupees 2039 crores at the end of this quarter. Thank you very much. We are now ready to take any questions. We will now begin the Q&A session. If you wish to ask a question to the panelists, kindly raise your hand and allow camera and microphone access. Alternatively, 
question in the chat menu and we will revert on it. Please restrict to two questions so that we may be able to address the questions from all participants. We will wait for a couple of seconds while the question queue assembles. Already assembled. First question is from the line of Anmol from Dam Capital. Hi, Anmol, please go ahead with your question. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so I uh, just had a couple of questions. Um, firstly, I uh, just want to understand the gross paid supplier additions for this quarter. Um, so has it come to FI23 quarterly levels or is there a pain uh, there as well? And uh, if not, then when do you think that uh, it can come back to the previous levels? And more, I think we are uh, on the grass side. Uh, I think we are about a thousand odd customers away from the last year, same quarter. So I think uh, because this 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 particular year, uh, there was a Dashera and Ashtami and Naomi on a different month and uh, Diwali was on a different month. Uh, more on working days. So that's about it. So I think uh, we are just about a thousand short of the gross edition in the last year's quarter. Sure. Uh, thanks. And um, also uh, just uh, on the total uh, paid supplier editions, uh, so has there been any change in the strategy uh, for the editions that is happening through channel partners? Uh, are we focusing more towards our own uh, sales people uh, for uh, paid supplier editions, given that uh, we have seen a very strong increase in the sales employees in the last uh, uh, few quarters? Uh, just wanted to understand that strategy. So uh, there has been one change that we are now doing. Uh, we uh, we had all our sales supervision and servicing employees on our own uh, roles while we had two kinds of uh, outsourced sales. One is the channel partner outsourced sales, the other is the uh, DST managed uh, outsourced sales. DST managed uh, outsourced sales where we have our own area manager, our own branch manager. However, the people were on a different uh, uh, roles. So if you see the, uh, uh, and then we have been guiding, all of that cost was going into the outsourced sales cost. What we have seen that in general, the attrition and the joining levels and the retention in our own employees versus the people who work out of our own branches, but just work on a different uh, uh, third party payroll, uh, is very, very significantly different and we are not gaining any uh, advantage out of that. So we have decided, we have taken a decision that we would want uh, all of them to be now coming on to India Mart roles. That uh, means, and that we took the decision sometime uh, around November, post Deepavali, and since then all the new joinings have been done in the uh, uh, on the India Mart payroll. And we are also in the process of moving all the existing thousand odd employees, uh, which are there on the uh, third party payroll, also to India Mart uh, payroll in the next uh, two quarters or so. So you will see uh, a significant jump happening on that side. Little bit of a ramp up might be happening, but uh, not that we are uh, going away from any uh, channel partners or that. Channel partners continue to be a very important uh, uh, and uh, significant uh, um, contributor to our 
new customer acquisition strategy. As I said last time, in order to uh, control the churn, we will go and do slicing and dicing based upon the tier uh, wise customer acquisition, based upon the monthly versus annual customer acquisition, based upon the turnover wise customer acquisition, based upon the industry wise customer acquisition. We have uh, gone ahead and done few of those uh, implementations where we have decided that, uh, you know, for a tier three and tier four, I think uh, uh, from a proprietorship based businesses, uh, there's no point acquiring uh, customers in the monthly mode. So we have stopped doing that. So that little bit uh, tweaking that we are doing, but I don't think any big change has happened on that side. No. So uh, no, uh, thanks. Uh... Thanks for the detailed answer. Uh, and just last thing, uh, that uh, when do we think that we can get back to uh, six, seven thousand uh, sort of paid supplier uh, additions on a net uh, basis? Um, uh, do you think that uh, maybe one or two quarter down the line uh, we can achieve this number? I am sure, you know, but I, I but I'm, I'm afraid to commit any number as of now. Uh, until unless I achieve that consistently for two quarters, I will not be able to actually say. So uh, generally, quarter four is always bullish in India for everybody and for us also, you see, it has always been bullish. So uh, we might see some improvement, but then quarter one uh, is very bearish. So I think uh, uh, anything on a consistent basis, uh, let's wait for uh, Q2 of next year or Q3 of next year. Sure, uh, sure, sir. Thanks. Uh, that's it for my end. Thanks, Anmol. Next question is from the line of Nikhil Chaudhary from Novama. Hi, Nikhil. Please go ahead with your question. Hello. Uh, hey, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is regarding the collection growth, which is like 60-70% uh, this quarter for console and standalone business. Uh, this is lower than what we have seen in last four or five quarter, and generally the trend has been more than 25% plus. So anything to read here? Is it just one quarter downturn and we expect it to be back to 25% plus trajectory from uh, quarter four? Yeah, Nikhil, uh, as you can see, the uh, customer growth is slowing down and uh, it's been three quarters in consistent, you know, last two quarters we have added only uh, two, 2,000 customers. Even the previous quarter, we added only 5,000 customers in the quarter one. Uh, so I think that would have some effect, but should it have gone uh, down below 20% or uh, gone to 16-17% uh, is really surprising and we are uh, working on that to find out uh, the exact uh, scenario why it has gone down to 16-17% is it one of the holiday or uh, one of the uh, one of certain divisions or something but I think uh, uh, yeah from 25% uh, you are definitely going to see us coming more like 20% uh, collection growth going forward as until and unless we improve on the uh, customer growth. So as, as we can get back to our 6,000 customer growth or 5,000 customer growth per quarter, uh, I think you will see uh, more like 20% collection growth uh, rather than 25% collection growth because 25% collection growth has been coming on the top of uh, 7, 8, 9,000 customer growth. So, I mean, obviously with 2, 2,000 customer growth, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. Understood, sir. So, second question is regarding uh, uh, the buyer, uh, registered buyer growth or unique business inquiry, which is uh, clearly growing uh, uh, at a much low, slower pace, uh, single digit uh, uh, on YY basis, right? Couple of quarters back, uh, you mentioned that uh, if the registered buyer do not increase materially by end of FY 24, 24 then you will be concerned, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, in terms of business inquiry, we haven't seen uh, much material jump. Uh, where I'm coming from, sir, is that uh, uh, if you see the metrics and the unique business inquiry per supplier, 
that matrix uh, is uh, going down and back to pre covid so just want to understand what's happening there any action you have taken to increase the number of inquiry growth per se yeah so uh, the 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 traffic has grown by about uh, 9% year on year and the uh, unique business inquiries have also grown by about uh, 5 odd percent uh, in terms of uh, increasing the unique business inquiries i think we have found uh, few uh, experiments that have worked in the uh, in the past couple of weeks uh, that should be visible uh, in times to come uh, we are experimenting with uh, uh, another call to action like a whatsapp kind of a call to action in some uh, on some pages uh, on the mobile website and that seems to be uh, working so uh, i don't think any any anything uh, much to read here from 23 i mean if you if you really see we were pre covid we were uh, from pre covid we are still much better and uh, we are fine here i think uh, we should be able to reach to 25 million in times to come uh sure sir very helpful uh, good luck for coming period thank you so much thanks nikhil next question is from the line of abhishek bhandari from nomura hi abhishek please go ahead with your question Please yourself. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. So I was saying in the last quarter you had said you had affected the price increase on ten percent of your silver monthly user base. Uh, what is that new percentage now at the end of third quarter? Would you like to answer what how much is the silver monthly? I think almost. Uh, mm, by now almost uh, 33% of our silver monthly customers are on newer newer price and and as i said uh, 75% of the 50% uh, of the customer base is platinum and gold and rest uh, is divided half and half uh, between the silver monthly and silver annual so uh, out of the 25% total customer base about 50000 total customer base i think uh, About twenty thousand is already on a newer, newer, newer price model. Got it. Thank you, sir. The second question is: You mentioned you are trying to, you know, get some of these third-party outsource people to your own payrolls for better efficiency purpose. Uh, does it also have any cost advantage to you from a medium-term perspective? Not really. I think we have negotiated that uh, outsourcing model at a at a couple of hundred rupees per person per month. I think we will actually pass it on to uh, to the employee themselves. So, from a cost It's standpoint, a... it will be uh, pretty much neutral. I mean, we have currently that cost as a part of an outsourced sales, uh, and I think once uh, all these uh, approximately thousand people moves to our payroll, it would shift by approximately ten crore rupees every quarter mm -hmm. from outsourced sales to our manpower cost. got it got it thank you sir and my last question is you know on your fourth quarter you know margin outlook uh, should we expect a similar seasonality in margins as we expect every year in the sense that you gave on salary increments to your employees yes uh, so salary increment have already happened uh, the letters are on their way out uh, you know they happened generally with the fact from january this time we have done it with the fact from uh, first december uh also uh, the uh, march quarter in general the collections come up front heavily so that's why there is a up front cost which results into the lower uh, margins uh, based upon the recognized revenue uh, so you can expect the similar seasonality coming in the uh, march quarter thank you sir so my last question if i can squeeze one more so you know your experiment of raising price increases uh, you know on the lower end pack Uh, you know has led to some increased churn and you know india being india where there is so much of sensitivity to prices 
do you think longer term in your business model you should be working more towards higher arpu increase and worry less about you know subscriber addition or you think uh, you know at some point will i mean what the mass you are comfortable with let's say you know you're targeting 20% growth long term uh, if you could break down what comfort you have on arpu growth what comfort you have on you know subscriber addition growth more from a medium term perspective not nearly next one or two quarters yeah on a medium term i think i have already said you know the best would be in excess of 10 10% growth in both uh, ideally speaking you know uh, if you want to get to 25% if you see in the past whenever we got to 25% it has been more uh, 15% on the customer growth 15 to 18% on the customer growth and uh, 6 to 8% on the uh, arpu growth uh, i think uh, given that uh, the size has increased by now but still uh at 200000 customer we are uh, just 2% of uh, you know overall uh, businesses in india which are gst registered and uh, properly filing uh, given that uh, in certain cities where we have good penetration our penetration level are as high as uh, 4% to 5% already so why should uh, Uh, be the customer growth be constrained at this point of time uh, i'm sure we have done we would have done uh, because as we have grown from a, a pre covid base of uh, 700 odd crore collections to now 1400 odd crore collection uh, run rate uh, i think that's a, uh, and and we have uh, decentralized a lot of operations and everything i'm sure we will find more uh, uh, opportunities to fix uh, you know slackness in the system and uh, at this scale uh, of network effect uh, even uh, find more opportunities in the product to make it work better uh, so i don't think i need on the neither side uh, we should be looking at anything lower than uh, 10% uh, uh, either side so i think uh, our math Uh, long term math uh, long term means medium term math should still be uh, you know 15 to 18% customer growth and uh, uh, 7 to 10% uh, arpu growth so i think we will we will continue to strive for that i don't see any reason not to uh, not to happen got it thank you sir and all the best thanks abhishek Next question is from the line of Abhishek Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Hi, Abhishek. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, just a uh, first question on uh, the productivity bit, right? Uh, what is your outlook on that? And uh, recently, one of your uh, competitors uh, actually spoke about using AI tools uh, to do processes which were being done manually uh, till now. So, is there any room for you to do something similar? multiple i think there is always room to do uh, more optimization more automation and if you go to, go to a margin lever slide you will see uh, you will see how uh, margins have expanded over a period of time and uh, you know gross margin uh, have come back to the pre better than pre covid time you know in pre covid uh, for the full year of fy20 we got uh, Uh, 70% gross margin we are already uh, at 71 72% gross margin and i think uh, there is always uh, uh, possibility wherever there are large scale uh, people operation to do automation uh, i think uh, every and this is a ongoing process this is not something that we need to announce uh, so i think we will we'll, we'll continue to have that uh, uh, improvement uh, done But at the same time, as the scale increases, 
uh, you invest in people at uh, uh, decentralized management level and other level. So I think those become are typically neutral at uh, 72% gross margin or 75% gross margin. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean that uh, going ahead next year, at least, we should see the uh, employee benefits as a proportion of revenues, uh, you know, start coming off? Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, will, will that happen at the top of the pyramid? Possibly no, mm -hmm. because uh, as we will decentralize further, uh, we would want uh, more uh, state heads to manage their own PNL. Uh, so probably we are we are going to save at the bottom of the pyramid some uh, by by doing automation. But at the same time, we are going to invest uh, in making the company more resilient, so that uh, as we have grown in the last five seven years from uh, from two three hundred crores to thousand uh, crore plus, how do we grow from here? Uh, thousand crore plus to three thousand crore plus, and for that, uh, what kind of management and what kind of uh, systems and processes are needed? So we will uh, reinvest that uh, because I don't think we will be chasing a bit of margin uh, by saving that one or two percent. Understood. Uh, so if I look at the employee expenses this quarter, right? Uh, I see that the jump. Uh, employees are very high employee per uh, as an uh, uh, employee expense per person. Uh, is that because of the hikes that was taken from 1st of December? But as in, if I take yeah. the increment... Yeah, I think you, are, you are right. So if you see year on year, uh, the employee expenses would have gone up by roughly around 28%. And yeah. uh, one of the reasons yeah. is that we have uh, you know, taken... The uh, the hike uh, in in December that what we used to do in January so it is not there in the corresponding base of December last year. So that's for only one month. Yes. Got it. But that would also mean that the sequential decline that is characteristic of your Q4 numbers that will be less sharp this year around, right? I'm sorry, sequential decline in employee expenses, you're saying, Abhishek? So overall, there is a sequential decline in EBITDA margin in Q4 over Q3, right? That is a trend. Now, given you have moved one month uh, earlier, your uh, hike cycle, that would mean that the sequential decline in EBITDA margin... Yeah, you are right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. right. Yes, you are right. Understood, understood. So that decline will be lesser. Fair enough. And so what was the strategy behind, you know, uh, moving forward the uh, increments? Are you trying to do a change uh, in your, uh, uh, you know, uh, reporting year? Yeah. Sorry, uh, I mean, I mean, employee expenses, is that, is it going to move forward further going ahead or you're going to stay here? No, this year I think uh, we generally first first January used to become very difficult. We were plan. We used to make annual operating plan. We used to do prepare for a bumper quarter four, and also doing uh, four thousand, five thousand, and reviews used to become difficult. So we pre pawned it by one month because uh, the, the 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 amount of work used to be too much. Uh, I don't think it is going to be a regular affair or change. Uh, let's see how it goes. Understood. Now, uh, if I talk about the gross additions number, right, uh, that I'm guessing would be uh, similar to what, uh, I mean, at least broadly similar to what it used to be, right? Uh, now, uh, where are we seeing this gross addition coming from? Me? As in, so uh, see, uh, you had spoken about how in tier two, tier three cities, you had seen a <clears throat> sharper churn, and uh, right. So I'm guessing you would have kind of slowed your gross additions from tier two, tier three also, or at least from those areas. So I'm just trying to understand what is compensating for that gross additions. Yeah, so we have not. Uh, I mean, as I said, uh, last we met was end of October. 
uh, and I said I will go back to the drawing board. Uh, we have just implemented that tier four, tier three, and tier four. We will, uh, you know, steadily go uh, one by one, one center by one center. So it has not yet affected, uh, you know, came into effect fully. Uh, mm. Sometime in the, by the middle of the quarter it will come. It is not just, uh, you know, from tomorrow on nothing on that side. So, so by and large things are uh, smoother. Uh, rather than uh, uh, one one fine day you cutting the entire tier four or entire tier three, that's not how we do it. So I think uh, uh, currently all you know as always the most of the uh, customer acquisition has always been 60 percent of the customer acquisition has always been in the top tier cities and uh, another twenty five percent coming from uh, the tier two and tier three. And uh, only and rest of India is uh, has always been ten percent. So, uh, so we have not yet stopped completely. Understood. Now, just one uh, thing here in tier three, tier four, from the experience of some of your competitors, generally the churn is high, but it is not like people churn out for lifetime. It is often that they come back after you know one maybe six months time. So are you seeing something like that also happening in tier 3, tier 4? Or is, is, you have not seen anything like that? I mean, the numbers are so small that uh, getting into those uh, uh, is so small. And that is exact. That is the exact reason we are not saying that we are not going to acquire uh, if somebody is coming. We are simply saying that we are not going to acquire it on a monthly basis where our cost of customer acquisition upfront is higher than the money that we realize. Okay, so that is why we are uh, saying that we will move to a an more annual subscription uh, for a proprietorship firm in the tier three and tier four. Got it. So the the outsourced uh, sales partners will continue to exist for tier three, tier four. However, they will not be uh, giving you monthly sales customers where the cost is. Is not making sense as as per you but, as a first problem. of all. Let me clarify. Yeah, uh, all the uh, outsource are the all the sales partner are in tier one and tier two cities. Maybe okay. a couple of them are in tier three. Whatever we are talking is of tier three and tier four. Yeah. So tier one and tier two, all the partners, everything remains as it is. No change. Uh, as of now has been implemented or we are planning to. So we will go very, very slow there. Uh, if at all, we have to make any change. Uh, we are very sensitive to any partner, uh, you know, coming in or coming, going out uh, like that. Uh, on the tier four, most of the acquisition happened either inbound or telesales. It was not uh, okay. a field sales at all. Uh, we hardly, you know, I, I don't know, Maybe there is a city on the borderline of tier two and tier three falling in tier three, so it is called tier three. But otherwise, uh, by design, we do not have any uh, presence in the tier three city, physical presence in the tier three city. Got it. Uh, in in terms of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tier three, tier four cities. We, you have all obviously to, uh, spoken about some uh, cities slash towns which were, uh, you know, uh, which were a surprise on the negative side, but were some cities or towns which were a surprise on the positive side as well? If you could, if you could talk a little bit on that. No, I don't have much data to talk on, on that. Thank you. Fair enough. And just one last question from Rajesh, sir. If you have. Uh, uh, could you please explain uh, uh, how how things are progressing with Busy, and if you are making any uh, uh, additions to your uh, uh, team there? No, I, as I mentioned, uh, in terms of our uh, growth rates uh, of billing customers, I think we are doing fairly fine there. Uh, We've also hired uh, senior folks uh, to look at sales, uh, service, and marketing. So uh, the team also have been strengthened uh, with some senior level hires in those key areas. Understood. Understood. That's very helpful, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks.
थैंक्स अभिषेक नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ विवेकानंद फ्रॉम एम्बर्ट कैपिटल हाई विवेकानंद प्लीज गो एड विद योर क्वेश्चन thank you very much for the opportunity so uh, my first question is on the elevated churn at silver monthly levels uh, dinesh ji uh, what exactly is the problem here is it uh, is it because of the acquisition aggression that you did in smaller towns are there any specific geography issues uh, or or uh, or is there any uh, servicing issue of the silver monthly users could you elaborate on that uh, because i couldn't quite understand what the problem is that uh, I, because you, last time we met in october you you said that you are going back to the drawing board and and i'm sure by now you would have picked up some cues that would help you answer this question better yeah vivekan and i think uh, all of this you know uh, so i think uh, if it was a one single piece that something has gone wrong uh, it was much easier to identify uh, i think what we did uh, uh, in the last uh, you know post uh, post july 2021 when we saw two two covid waves and everything happened and all that then we uh, you know expanded quickly uh, over the next 18 months or so and that whole expansion uh, led to Uh, almost double the employee count from three thousand to six thousand, uh, going uh, higher. You know, double the uh, channel sales partner also. Uh, also, the servicing staff also is uh, a lot of new newer staff. Uh, many of the customers uh, and and the brand has uh, run uh, quite ahead. Uh, with the uh, everybody thought that uh, you know online is the way to do business, uh, so everybody wanted to try online after the COVID. So I think a couple of many things and and uh, and and each one of them, you know, in in our case, uh, a thirty percent plus churn is bad, and a twenty percent is the very very good. I think so. I think the margin of error is uh, only plus minus five percent. Uh, where you become great company or uh, or, or or bad company, and I think it's just one on two two percent each, and that's what we're trying to correct. And I'm I'm pre I'm pretty sure because uh, if there was any problem in product and technology, if there was any product and demand, we would have seen uh, you know issues at the uh, gold and platinum, and you know. All the KPIs of the gold and platinum, all the KPI of the supplier engagement, continue to remain uh, very very strong. So as I said last time, also uh, close to fifty percent of our customer base, around forty eight forty nine percent, and close to seventy five percent of the uh, revenue, which is seventy two seventy three percent exactly. I checked yesterday, is coming from gold and platinum, and their ARPU is also increasing. uh man quarter on quarter and their churn is also uh, you know uh, almost running uh, near the best ever ever since uh, even even from pre covid level so effectively the top 10% customer uh, while the overall arpu has grown 11% top 10% customer arpu has grown by almost uh, uh, 13% so uh, so i don't think there is a uh, one small one big problem i think it is the small small uh, things uh, training the people getting the processes right i think the uh, size right and as i said it will take two three quarters and uh, will be will be back uh, uh, at a higher growth trajectory soon uh fair fair i think those observations are uh, very pertinent thank you for elaborating uh, from a, a servicing standpoint uh, since uh, since you had previously also mentioned that your aspiration was to have that number the number of paying suppliers to the servicing employees come down so that you could provide better service uh, but we are not yet seeing 
or, or rather your company isn't yet seeing the benefits of this investment made in sales supervising and uh, supervision and servicing employees uh, by when do you think that these employees that you've added for servicing uh, they start contributing meaningfully either in terms of uh, getting more upgrades which will reflect in your collections growth or reduce churn which will uh, obviously reflect in the net ads yeah, so so vivekan is not that uh, uh, it has not resulted into a uh, better uh, across all the segments so if you really see our uh, key customers you know golden platinum segment if we didn't hire the uh, employees to this level we would have left certain uh, revenue on the table uh, and the, the entire arpu growth that you see in uh, in the in the golden platinum segment is definitely uh, the investment that we made on the uh, people side uh, which we had not made during the uh, covid time uh, yes uh, the major pe- major headcount investment has happened on the silver monthly and silver annual and that is where we are since the uh, there is very little to show you uh, in terms of either arpu or in terms of chair uh, but i am sure uh, that will be visible and that will be visible soon so but whatever investment that we have done on the uh, golden platinum side that has definitely uh, gives us a comfort because without that we would not have been able to uh, drive even the arpus uh, like this okay thank you for the elaborate discussion and all the best thanks vivekanand Next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Dolat Capital. Hi Rahul, please go ahead with your question. Rahul, please unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, I hope I'm audible now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, just uh, one uh, bit uh, on this uh, subscriber edition side of the story. Uh, we like your confidence uh, on what kind of growth uh, this kind of a platform in this kind of a market can deliver. But if you see uh, what ha- essentially uh, some of the trend underlying trend that should support this kind of thing are actually playing out in the market in terms of india as an end market how it, uh, we are doing as a country how we are getting more and more organized and how more and more digitized we are going into uh, into our system and behavior but why uh, at least for now we are not seeing uh, those trend percolating into the kind of an outcome that we desire i think i already answered that uh, we we have grown uh, rapidly in the last two two years and uh, uh, we need to manage that growth efficiently right and just yeah yeah just one more thing uh, like since uh, we have a, a much uh, lower penetration in terms of uh, registered supplier to paid supplier ratio and we may be following the activities of a uh, potential uh, registered supplier who could turn into a paid supplier given the activity increase that they are seeing at their end in terms of consuming lead and other things uh, is it uh, is it that the action which needs to be done on that part of leveraging that cohort and converting them into uh, paid sub, uh, supplier that uh, parts needs to be improve to a much uh, better uh, outcome uh, is that uh, something that we can work on yeah, so uh, i i don't think our gross additions has been uh, much of a challenge 
you know i think it is the churn and it is the first 6 uh, 9 months first year churn the 12 month retention and and it is uh, it is always true with every marketing platform that you see for sme business so whether it is google or whether it is facebook or whether it is uh, you know amazon uh, the number of people that try on any marketing platform and whether it is alibaba uh, are in the first year generally very very high and uh, the retention rate at the end of the year is low a uh, while uh, once they learn how to do how to utilize a digital marketing platform for their business for their uh, segment uh, they end up uh, becoming a ambassador for that uh, for that segment and uh, uh, end up becoming the leader uh, in the uh, in the in, in the times to come so similar uh, thing is visible in our case also uh, the first year you know the churns actually come down by half every year so if the first year uh, churn is uh, 50 percent that will come down to 20 percent 25 percent next year and come down to uh, you know 12.5 percent uh, the third year uh, so uh, so i think we we need to const constantly find the right kind of uh, suppliers and find the right kind of tools uh, to educate them properly uh, uh, there is no question that uh, uh, the penetration levels will go to 10% uh, uh, in in the next decade or so right right uh, my uh, small slide uh, uh, part of the question is not getting addressed here uh, what i was trying to also understand is that when we are uh, going for the gross addition, uh, there is a much larger universe that we are chasing. But there could be a subset of that universe, uh, a cohort, uh, which may be using our platform far more effectively in an unpaid scenario. And the probabilities of those people, uh, you know, uh, benefiting out of a paid subscription uh, would be relatively higher. So is that that, that cohort is uh, something which is fructifying, uh, uh, fructifying better? I mean, that you are pointing it again and again, we will go back and say, but I think our all our uh, hot lead generation, all our prioritization, all our AI and ML, uh, all our segmentation uh, does uh, day in, day out this only, uh, which are these uh, free sellers which are getting more inquiries, which are the free sellers which are getting uh, better engaged with our platform, which are the, uh, you know, and that is how we learn which cities are doing well, which, uh, which uh, uh, you know, industries are doing well, which kind of turnovers are doing well. So we have all kind of segmentation data, uh, which we track uh, in detail. But if you're saying that there could be still be some segment which are, uh, which could be left out, we will definitely go back and take your suggestion and to see if there is something left out. Great, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, and thanks a lot. Uh, and congratulations on strong margin uh, improvement. Uh, I hope this trend continue on an annualized basis. Thanks, Rahul. Next question is from the line of Swapnil from JM Financials. Hi, Swapnil. Please go ahead with your question. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is with respect to the categories, uh, if you can call out uh, where the churn is uh, significantly high right now. And uh, a follow-up to that is, uh, uh, where do you think the churned customers are going right now? I mean, uh, what are the other alternatives that these guys have uh, uh, apart from India Mart and uh, or, or what what else are they doing? Uh, that will be the first question. Thanks. So on the industry side, uh, you will see that service industry we are still not very good. Uh, certain certain very consumerish industries like apparel we are still not very good. Uh, despite the fact that it is one of the very large industries, uh, we are we are still not very good. Agro, food, uh, vegetables, 
such a large category, we are still not very good. And the churn is uh, always very, very high on, on these kind of uh, segments, which despite the fact being such a large, continue to remain, uh, uh, you know, at number 10 and number uh, 15 in our category list. Uh, that doesn't change as much. Uh, I, I, I won't say that the medical as a category has... Uh, uh, increased churn because whatever was that to happen that has already happened in the past three four quarters because whatever came during the uh, covid time uh, that is now now nullified uh, now coming to the city side uh, certain city clusters uh, again are uh, you know more more susceptible earlier we had seen tirupur like that now we are seeing surat like that uh, so i think you know uh, not not fair to call out names here, but I think uh, we we do take segment by segment uh, to check out uh, uh, which particular segment is uh, causing higher churn and why, mm, and we try to fix that uh, by 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 doing category work so that uh, we can we can improve the matchmaking better. We try and talk to ten different suppliers, ten different buyers, uh, uh, which particular uh, what can we do better. Uh, so that uh, they can keep coming back to the platform. So we do all that. Uh, what was the second part of the question? A lot of these customers are the first time triers. I think uh, um, a few of the customers, because at the end of the day, there are only four or five uh, large platforms that I can think of. Uh, and I, I name them all the time between India Mart and Google and Amazon and Just Dial. Uh, these are the four big ones. Uh, hmm? Yeah, and, and, and Facebook uh, and WhatsApp and uh, Instagram. So between these five people, uh, by and large, they move. Uh, there could be certain very specific verticals here and there where those people might be trying, but, but I haven't seen any vertical gaining significant momentum so far. Got it, sir. Uh, and the second question uh, re related to the churn again uh, is like, do you think uh, the uh, re uh, limited real estate that we have on the platform uh, could be one of the reasons for this churn? Uh, because, uh, you know, typically only a limited number of uh, uh, suppliers uh, can come on the first page of any search page. And especially for silver category customers, uh, the leads with visibility will always be low. Uh, you know, and and therefore the ROIs for them uh, may not be meaningful, uh, and that may be one of the reasons uh, that uh, you know you you uh, the churn rate for them is quite high, and if that is the case, uh, yeah, I, I is, it, is it a, yeah 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 I understood your question. So if we, if we were a one way matchmaking platform, if we if we didn't have a RFQ system. Uh, then you are right. Uh, whether it is uh, Google or whether it is an Amazon, uh, only top 10 people end up getting the 90% of the business and everything. But uh, since we introduced the RFQ model uh, back into 2012, I think the, the entire uh, situation changed dramatically where every buyer is up for grab by... Uh, all kind of sellers, whether uh, he's a silver or whether he's a gold or whether he's platinum. The only limitation is the number of buyers that you can grab onto. So uh, it is not purely and purely buyer led. So one side of the matchmaking, you, you are right. People pay us money in the platinum and gold uh, to come up is because more buyers can see them. That's like a traditional advertising model. But uh, with the RFQ system, we ensure that every and each and every seller, if he is uh, active on the platform, if he is vigilant, uh, there is no uh, preference given uh, to the platinum supplier or to the uh, against the silver supplier uh, that he cannot consume a buy lead or, a, or, a, or an RFQ. And that is when our model start to scale. And um, so if we have been able to scale to this level, it is because of that. Otherwise, you are right. Uh, 
um, if you have uh, 100,000 categories, you have only uh, limited real estate of uh, top three, five, ten people to be monetized. Uh, just a, a, a follow-up question to that. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, and, and this is basis limited research of mine. Uh, uh, the 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 interaction that I, I have had with the different category of customers that suggests that your uh, platinum and gold category customers ROI is significantly better, and and they're quite happy. Uh, uh, but silver category customers typically tend to be, you know, uh, they don't. Uh, they do get uh, certain leads, but obviously the conversion rates and the ROIs for them are significantly poor. Uh, and then that's a broad feedback. That, I mean, I mean, purely, it is the other way around. Those who are engaged better with the platform, they find the ROI so good that they become uh, gold and platinum. Uh, the, the ones who are not engaged better with the platform, they don't find enough value and they don't become the gold and platinum. Okay, got it. Uh, got it, sir. Uh, thanks for that opportunity. So because if you if you just become a good platinum subscriber at India Mart and not uh, do the follow up lead follow up and not consume the RFQs, uh, you are more likely to get uh, uh, worse uh, worse ROI than a, uh, than a engaged silver customer. If I if I were just to uh you know, ask that uh, uh, point again. Uh, what happens uh, given that the uh, current year uh, churn is very high? Uh, there are, uh, the number of people on the uh, silver category obviously are not those uh, uh, who can move to the higher categories immediately. Like we said in the past that it takes a year, a year, year and a half for these guys to move to the higher category. So uh, should that all uh, reflect on your uh, premiumization uh, for next uh, one or two years, the impact of the current year's uh, inability to uh, grow the silver customers? Not really. In fact, uh, uh, if the gross addition was the was the reason for not adding the uh, base, not not growing the base, then you are right. Uh, but if the churn is the reason for not growing the base, then in, then this is not this doesn't hold true because. Uh, uh, you know, by the by the time somebody uh, you know no, six nine months, uh, either the customer will churn or will stay, and and, and if he will stay, he will uh, upgrade uh, better. So I think uh, our mm, our opportunity to upgrade uh, typically has a uh, top top uh, quartile customers, while uh, the churn comes from the bottom quartile bottom quartile customers. And then there are in the middle, there are fence sitters uh, who neither upgrade nor share, uh, but continue to remain in the same category. Uh, so uh, I don't think the, the upgrade potential uh, is, is very much uh, directly linked with the, uh, the churn-led uh, growth. Yes, if it was uh, the gross addition-led growth, uh, you are right. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Yeah. All the best. Thanks, Swapnil. Next question is from the line of uh, Anirudh Chetty from Solidarity Investment Managers. Hi, Anirudh. Please go ahead with your question. Anirudh, please unmute yourself. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to ask your questions. Um, so my first question was essentially on just, uh, you know, buy, buyer behavior, you know, given that fundamentally drives traction on the platform. Uh, you know, given that we have a fairly sizable number of registered buyers already, you know, around 16, 17 crore buyers and you know the number of active buyers has kind of remained flat so what is what is your uh broad sense around the uh you know usage of india mart 
uh, by you know the put, uh, by potential buyers in India, would you say that we are at a fairly mature stage or this room to go uh, even further? And uh, what is the strategy essentially? Is it to get more buyers on the platform? You know, uh, get them to be more active, get more inquiries for buyer. Could you just share more uh, granularity around that, given that it's very important to our uh, business? Both, I think. Uh, one is to attract newer buyer on the platform. So if you if you see uh, when we uh, the total registered buyers uh, every every quarter they grow by uh, five to say six million. You know, five to six million every quarter. So that is the uh, new new registered buyers that came in. So five six they new and then. How much they can come repeatedly? Currently, we say 90 day repeat ratio is 53%, uh, which is uh, maybe just once a, in 90 days, one or more time. But if I see how many two or more time or how many three or more time, that number is very little. Uh, I We have to work on that uh, for uh, uh, people who have used uh, India Mart for three or couple, three or more times, they become the perfect uh, audience of India Mart. Uh, every time they need something B two B, they 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 don't forget to check out India Mart. But for uh, for most buyers to uh, have a first experience as very good experience, and then uh, then becoming a top of the mind recall uh, that. That that journey is still you know under progress, work in progress. Uh, over the next uh, uh, many years or so, I think uh, the number of new buyers uh, which we can attract will probably uh, become slower and slower. And the repeat uh, while while the twelve month active base may not increase dramatically from forty million to uh, maybe eighty million. But the number of times they're coming in, so the most important number is unique business inquiry. Because how many people came and inquired in in, in a unique day? Because these unique business inquiries is if I come uh, out of these 90 days, uh, three different days, these are the three different unique business inquiries. So, uh, so how many days do I come to India Mart and send an inquiry for a different product? That's the number to be uh, uh, final number to be uh, uh, looked at. And that number, if you see, uh, has been growing uh, at 20 odd percent, but uh, can this grow at uh, much, much faster rate in the CAGR level? Uh, you know, why we are not able to do that in across so many categories and across so many cities uh, is what we work day in, day out. From the customer's viewpoint, is the uh, uh, the buyer uh, looking for products that are very bespoke, very discreet, such that you know their consumption for such products would be actually very infrequent, or are they actually more like the repeat type of buyers who kind of need it uh, no, on a more frequent basis, just so, to understand the inquiry uh, whether that will so, go up. On India Mart, most of the time, you know, the first time the buyer lands. Is probably because he's looking for something which he could not find uh, typically uh, in his uh, in, in his uh, uh, neighborhood or in his uh, uh, or he is looking for a price or he is looking for a uh, uh, you know customization. So these are the three things for which the customer comes for the first time. But then he realizes. Uh, that all the three things are very good good here at India Mart. If he realizes that, and if he realizes that uh, three times uh, in a row, then he becomes our regular regular buyer. But making him realize for the first time that uh, because first time many of the, for many of these people, uh, many of these buyers, uh, uh, it could be very overwhelming. Uh, you know, suddenly there are so many suppliers, so many products, uh, um, whom to talk to. Uh, uh, you know, price are 30, 40, 50 percent cheaper than a retail platform. Uh, how to get it done uh, is a uh, is a is a challenging and overwhelming opportunity for a buyer and seller both. Uh, so getting the first experience right in 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 varied categories as uh, uh, 
uh, as apparel versus machinery versus nut bolts versus uh, uh, vegetables versus uh, uh, pharmaceutical is a challenge for a horizontal marketplace. Uh, but at the same time, the horizontal marketplace gives you the uh, strength that tomorrow, today he might have come for a, a nut bolt, tomorrow he might come for the entire machine, uh, day after tomorrow he might be able to come for uh, uh, a furniture or uh, and, and next time maybe for a apparel. So I think uh, uh, there is an advantage and a disadvantage both of a being a horizontal and a being a vertical. Uh, we have been both at Tolexo, we have been a vertical with full transaction platform and at India Mart, we have been a horizontal. It takes a really, really long time for a horizontal to become, uh, become feel like a successful uh, repeat platform. Uh, it takes uh, very quickly uh, for a vertical to do that, but at the same time, uh, you know, the number of total buyers that you can attract, the number of total sellers that you can attract is very, very limited. So the revenue opportunity is lower. So, I mean, that is what we keep learning and uh, trying to do every day. Absolutely. And uh, just one final question. Um, uh, you know, we are exploring uh, tier three, four uh, cities, towns, uh, and you know, you mentioned it's a long process, but wanted to understand that, uh, you know, finally for the suppliers there, do, you, do we think that the value proposition for an India Mart is uh, strong uh, and, uh, you know, that from, and their ability to kind of, you know, cater to buyers' requirements exists, uh, uh, you know, or are there constraints around just the infra being underdeveloped or, you know, them being so deep in the hinterlands that the logistic cost, you know, doesn't make sense. So what are other challenges that you think you could face in these markets that weren't there in the metro tier one, tier two? So one, uh, uh, if I heard you right, uh, you're saying that we are, are we going for tier three, tier four supplier? We are actually retreating from tier three, tier four supplier. We are actually focusing more on tier one and tier two suppliers. Uh, on the buyer side, you are right because uh, a lot, a lot of uh, value uh, because of uh, the large availability, the prices uh, on India Mart attract a lot of tier three, tier four buyers, and uh, you know the logistics as well as the payments as well as the trust, uh, all three are the uh, the challenges and. Uh, um, you know, we we try and build trust. We try and build uh, discovery. But I think like payment is uh, straightforward today. If you want to pay in advance or if you uh, pay later, but how do you pay escrow and how do you uh, do that? That that remains a challenge. So I think currently a lot of tier tier four buyers use us as a uh, price discovery platform and maybe uh, try to still buy it from a, from their local uh, vendor or somebody but but there are all kind of mix uh, possibilities here Got it. Got it. thank you for answering the question thanks anirudh thank you very much everyone it has been a very engaging session. I would now like uh, Dinesh Thar to uh, give his concluding remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for uh, <clears throat> asking very deep questions this time. Uh, this has been truly enjoyable today. Uh, we will we have tried to address your queries in the time available, but if you still have any questions, please feel to contact our investor relationship team on our website and uh, have a great new year and uh, ahead. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of India Mart, we now conclude this webinar. Thank you.